The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the uh, November 4th, the Magical Monday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there's having a great day. Hope you had a great weekend. But as far as today is concerned, because today is something we can do something about. And so let's make sure we have an extraordinary day. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we're going to find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We're going to go figure out what the bulls and the bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But much more important than that, during this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. That's right. You can dial on in at 877-927-6648. And if you can't dial in, guess what? We've got you covered. You can let those fingers do the walking. You can send me an email, steve at tfnn.com, just inside the subject heading. If you'd be so kind to put radio show question, of course, in our Tiger's Den, well, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on a magical, magnificent Monday. Of course, this is Tiger. Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. We've got all of the indices. That's including the spot volatility index in the green. That's right. You've got the Dow up 105 points. That's about four tenths of a percent. S&P up four tenths of a percent as well. That's 12, 13 points. NASDAQ 148. Russell up eight. Spot volatility index is up four percent. Of 54 cents, trade on at 12.84. Gold is flat, silver is uh, flat, light sweet crude is up a buck, natural gas is up 11 pennies, that's 4% to the upside. Uh, Treasury bonds, the 30 year is off one full point, trade out at 159.20. If we take a look at uh, leading the charge dollar wise to the upside, it's Amazon, 18 bucks. Lancaster Colony Corp up 18, Google up 16, Netties 16, Lending Tree 15, Mettler Toledo 14. To the downside, it is Credit Acceptance Corp down 40 bucks. 8.88%. Now, it's usually a good number out there. 8.88. Uh, Doesn't look good to me. Uh, and Sparity is up, and that's ticker symbol. NSP is off 35 bucks as well. That's down 32%. Yikes. Boston Beer losing some of its pale ale out there, down 7% or 27 bucks. Chipotle off 16. Equinix off 16. So there's things to look at, of course. I want to look at what you want to uh, look at. Let's just start by taking a look at what's going on in the markets here from an intraday perspective. Perspective. So I'm going to pull over Stevie's little market analyzer tool out here. We'll just put this on the screen. That's the white little backgrounded area. And if we take a look at this, what you're going to see from a short term standpoint, this helps me to pick out my Rhodes momentum indicator tops and bottoms. You'll see the ES mini, the NQ both have confirmed 30 minute and one hour top confirmation patterns. But look, let's do this. We've got a caller on the line, and we have call head seating here at TFNN. So let's go out and speak with uh, Tony in Wellesley, Mass. Tony, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you doing this afternoon? Good, Steve. Thanks. I just want to know, what, do you think oil can go high or do you think it's stopped? So what's your time frame that you're looking at? Give me a feel for what's the basis behind the question. What are you trying to do and accomplish? Maybe thinking of going short oil. Going short. You know? Okay. 
that I mean that that helps that helps me a lot. So what we want to do if you're going to go short oil is we want to be able to try to identify some type of pattern uh, as to where you should do it. So let's do this here, Tony. Let's just begin by taking a look at the daily time frame chart. You've got light speed crew December contract trading out at 5719. Now, Tony, I do not know where price is going to close today, but if price does close above 5692. We're 57.19. That will be a close above the top of its bearish structured TAS market profile. Now, what that means to you specifically is that 56.92 are where the natural sellers are located, prices above that. The center line of this profile, and this stretch between 53.26 at 56.92 the center is at 55.70 and at the center tony is where both buyers and sellers are believed to believe that there's fair value within inside that range within inside that top to the bottom sometimes i refer to it as a box out there even though on my screen it doesn't look like a box the point is tony that there's nothing more bullish than a failed bearish pattern and so sellers should be able because there's more sellers lined up between 55.70 and 56.92 than buyers Yet price is right now trading above that level. So we're going to give you the ixnay on going short light sweet crude. Now, if price were to close back below 56.92, then at least in that instance, you would have the sellers on your side. If price closes okay. above 56. If price closes above 56.92, I'm going to give you the next price target. We're going to do that by taking a look at Stevie's white background charts. And this would suggest that price would make, at a minimum, a move up to 59.39. Now, 59.39, Tony, is the price level. And the specific day I'm referring to is September 23rd, when we saw Light Swede Crude make nine consecutive lower closes than the close of each day four bars earlier. What that does is that sets up where price actually broke down in light sweet crude. That was 59.39. A close above that level, similar to what you and I were just taking a look at with regard to the TAS market profile, would really tell you about a significant change in trend. So to answer your question, and we're just taking a look at the daily time frame chart, we're going to have you just sit on your hands and watch the battle at 56.92. Because if there's a close above it, you should anticipate a move to 59.39. And then as price gets up there, then we'll have to have another conversation, see if there's any kind of new information. But I would have you stay put at the moment. That's my take. Okay, well, that's brilliant, Steve. I really appreciate it. And my congratulations for being rated so highly on the publications for the well, time of digest, you know? Well, thanks. I, I appreciate it. And it's all because of listeners and uh, denners uh, like yourself, uh, because what you guys do is you give us a reason to be as good as we possibly can. And that's a beautiful thing out there. So I want to say uh, thank you to you for your uh, listenership. Well, you give an A-plus effort, Steve, and God bless you. Well, thank you. Same to you. Thanks so much for calling, and best of luck uh, when you do go short, light, sweet, crude. So, um, okay. uh, folks, so, yeah, oh, you bet. Have a great day. So uh, what we were looking at before uh, Tony and I were having that conversation was the short-term time frame signals. And what we saw was on the ES Mini, we saw Rosemont indi indicator topping pattern uh, for the 30 and the 60-minute basis. So what does that look like? If we take a look at the ES Mini on its 30-minute basis, we can see price rising, do a less relative energy out there. We know that because my system automatically draws those black diagonal lines. Now what we wait for is some type of bearish reversal candle. In other words, for the sellers to tell us they've arrived. Well, that took place at 10 o'clock this morning on a 30-minute basis when it formed that Three River Evening Star. So what you and I are going to do when we get back from this break is go take a look at other levels of support, and we're also going to look at the 30-minute bullish or bearish TAS market profile signal. We'll be right back. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. 
Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back. Uh, Dow's up 105. S&P is 13. Hey, we're going to go out to Kansas and speak with Robert. Robert, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thanks, Steve. Thanks for taking my call. My I would pleasure. Like to piggyback on the previous caller. He had a question about oil. I actually yes. have a question about XOP. It's the ETF that has oil and gas producing um, companies in there. Yes. I don't currently have a position in that, but I'm looking to take a long position. And as far as my time frame, I would never use anything less than a daily chart. I prefer to use daily and weekly and hold, um, you know, the investments for a little while, you know, a few weeks sure. or so. Sure. So, so XOP, uh, Robert, and thanks for all that information. That makes it kind of helpful uh, for me to try to, uh, you know, guide guide you as to what the market is doing out there. And similar to uh, what we were just taking a look at with Tony and Lightsweed Crude, XOP today is now trading above the top of its daily profile, 2232. That also was a bearish structured box, meaning the center line of it, which is at 2173, is much closer to the top at 2232 than the bottom at 2057. So what this would say, this doesn't tell us whether there was a bottom pattern or not, but this would say that XOP wants to move higher. Now, just take a look at market profiles. The next level that we would look at would be the weekly time frame, and that is at 2443 happens to be the top of its box. So at this stage here, the signal to us is that the XOP should target 2443. If we move all the way over to the monthly chart out here, that's the very right-hand panel. Uh, price is well below the bottom of its profiles out there. So right now, your price target to the upside is 24. 
43 year trade at 2302. Let's go see if we can find a bottom. And even though you want to use your daily time frame chart, you did mention you would look at the weekly and the monthly. So we just did. I'm going to start in that reverse order and just start with the monthly time frame chart. Is XOP trying to form some type of major bottom out here? Well, here's one thing that we do know price has been pushing lower and doing it with less route of energy from a monthly standpoint. Now, it's just early part of November. If this were November 30th or whatever the last trading day is, we would say that this has completed or formed a erodes momentum, erodes momentum indicator bottom pattern because of the bullish reversal candle. Unfortunately, we've got a long way to go before the month comes to an end. If it did, though, we would also be looking for price to clear 2436 or thereabouts. 2436 happens to be Stevie's red line otherwise known as the oscillator and change line. What we can see here in the case of the XOP that every bounce to the upside has found resistance. Now, when I say bounce to the upside every, I'm really just referring to since uh, April of this year. But basically for the last six months or so, uh, any kind of bounces have found resistance there. So in order for XOP to really get its legs to the upside, we've got to see a close above Stevie's red line. Right now, that's measured at 2436. But this does have potential of uh, identifying a, a significant bottom. If I look at the weekly time frame chart, we're going to see something similar. Now, price was pushing lower, doing less route of energy into August 30th. It took several weeks for the bullish candle to form. That was on October 25th. So this is telling us that this has generated an intermediate term time frame bottom. Now, what you also know, what we also know is 2443 could be resistance for this. So we've got 2443, the top of its weekly profile, 2436, Stevie's red line. Those are the levels that price would need to close above in order for this thing to tell you that there is a change in trend. If I look at the daily time frame, this is where it becomes a slight problem. I really don't have a true bottom pattern, so to speak. What we do have is price pulling back to where it had broken out, which was 2069. That takes us back uh, to Robert to the day of uh, September the 4th out here. And this tells me the daily time frame chart. So no, no real necessary bottom pattern that I like to use to identify the bottom. Not all markets will generate one of my three or four signals to do that. But this still says to me prices headed up to that 24 level where it had last broken down. This is the XOP September 21st. So to sum it up for you, the intermediate and long term time frames have some promise out there, but the price needs to clear resistance and the daily time frame is above resistance. And so the 24 ish area is where price is headed to. Does that at least help you out? with regard to what XOP is doing? Oh, yes, that, that was excellent. Thank you for that summary. I have one other question on a long-term basis. Is I have a short position in TLT, and my perspective is from a weekly and monthly, just continue holding that short position, and I may add to it after a while. So if we take a look at the TLT, instead of looking at that, what I want to do is I want to look at, at the actual 30-year Treasury bond. And we can go back and take a look can at I, TLT. Yeah, go ahead. stop and ask you a question there? You, yeah. Given I'm looking at longer time frames, I understand that the Treasury bonds are good, like they do 24 hours a day. But since I'm looking at longer time frames, like the weekly and monthly, does that even matter for me? Well, I think what you want to do, yeah, I think it, it matters because um, you just want to you want to know where you've got. Uh, I, I guess does it matter? Um, I well, think and, and it that does. Was a, that was a question, not a challenge. Yeah, no, 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 no. I know that. I know that. And the, the, so I think it does matter because you're what you're what you're communicating to me is you are in the short uh, TLT trade hopefully for some time to come. Is, am I mishearing you or? No, that's that's correct. I plan oh, on okay. holding this for weeks or, or months unless the trend changes. Okay. So in that case there, what you'd really like to see is you'd really like to see some type of significant topping pattern uh, in the uh, in the Treasury bonds. And if, uh, Robert, if we go take a look at the monthly time frame chart, well, and this has the message that you're looking for, because here's one of those topping signals that I like. This is the TD setup nine count. And back in August, as Treasury bonds, the 30-year Treasury bond was moving higher, that formed bar number nine of a TD setup nine count. At those bars, eight, nine, or the bar following nine is when we 
we can see those changes in trend. So at this stage here, you've got the longer term change in trend signal to for me to be able to say to you, okay, I can see what you're looking at. Now on the longer term basis, this suggests that price should push down to my green line level, the oscillator and change line. Right now it's in the 155, 156 area out there, but that's just a, a price level that you're going to want to pay attention to. Much like we were looking at XOP, in this case here we're looking at bonds, but we're doing it in reverse where we were looking for bottoms. Here we're looking for topping signals. So the monthly has given you that signal. If I look at the weekly time frame chart out here, let me see if I can do some, I know I can do it, some wave counts. Let me make sure I just start from the correct place out here. Uh, and so I don't really have the intermediate meaning the weekly time frame signal that I look for for the uh, tops out there. Uh, you do have it on the on the monthly. Let me take a look at the daily out here. So in the daily time frame chart, um, what we like is that price right now is trading below Stevie's red line. And a red line out here means that the price oscillator, which is the difference between two exponential moving averages, 19 and 39, that the price oscillator is below zero. And you didn't like for the last two days where price was above zero, Robert, because that was suggesting there could be a change in trend and price might move up to 164 and 24, 30 seconds out there. So stay on here through the break. Right now, the daily time frame chart looks good, but you need to know where support is at because price could find support at 158.13. We'll be right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, uh, folks. We're tearing apart the 30-year Treasury and also take a look at TLT for Robert in Kansas, who is short uh, long-term, is uh, taking a long-term uh, short in the uh, uh, Treasury uh, market out here. And so what you're going to be watching for as far as T-bonds is concerned is the 158.13 level. Uh, that's a key level of support. If price breaks below that area, that will bode well for your trade out there. In the case of the TLT, an approximation for what that would equivalent B is about 137.99, but it's not going to be exact out there. You know, here's the TLT chart, and I'm just trying to provide you with levels of support. If you're going to ask me, Robert, hey, what's the uh, TLT or the TLT likely to do over the course of the next couple of hours out here? I would say it looks to me like it's going to bounce a bit. The reason I would say it's going to bounce a bit out here, I'm going to put my 30-minute, 60-minute, and two-hour time frame charts for the Treasury bonds out here. And what we can see on the 30 and the 60 minutes, they both have formed these TD setup nine count bottoms. And those would that would suggest that we should see a bit of a bounce here. That's not going to take you out of your trade out there, but we've got all types of people listening, all different types of time frames out here. And so um, you know, if somebody were to jump on the short side now from an intraday perspective, I would say that's not the right time to do that. So I like what the monthly time frame chart uh, shows you out there. Uh, just watch these uh, TAS profiles. It was a bit concerning or should have been concerning with price a couple of days ago uh, in the TLT's case trading above 139.65. That's what on a daily basis, which I know you said you use to make some different signal calls was suggesting that there was going to be more of a bounce or it could have been a bottom. And the reason it could have been a bottom was because the low inside of TLT, and this is the same thing for treasuries, the low that I'm referring to is October 28th was a higher low than the low from September 13th. So right now what you've got in the TLT is you've got a series of higher lows and lower highs. So really kind of a consolidation that's going on as we speak right now. Does that help you out, Robert? Yes, that's very helpful. Thank you for your time. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks for listening. Thanks for calling and I look forward to speaking to you again. That was Robert in Kansas. You bet. Let's go out to Sarasota and speak with uh, Ray. Ray, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you doing today? Doing well, Steve. And my question today is on CRR. I spoke with you about three weeks ago about it, and uh, at that point it seemed to have uh, bottomed and uh, had a nice little move up, and now it's done a pullback. And I'm wondering whether or not we're ready to take off again. So what it's actually doing right now today, potentially, well, first I'm going to give you where price needs to close below. Uh, give me a second. Well, here, let me pull the chart over so I can show you what I'm looking at. And for some reason, my, my white background chart hasn't caught up totally to uh, the e-signal chart for some reason. I don't know, but that's okay. So what, what this is in the process of potentially doing today potentially doing today, this is Carbo Ceramics, is generating a bottom signal. That bottom signal would be the TD setup eight count out here. Uh, the last time that we saw bottom in Carbo Ceramics was on October 11th. On October 11th, price got down and it formed bar number eight of a TD setup nine count. The very next session confirmed that TD setup nine count, and that was because the close of the following bar was below the close of bar number five. So that's the same thing that has to take place right now for Carbo Ceramics today. That says if Carbo Ceramics closes below $1.78, $1.78, then what you would have out here is you would have a confirmed TD setup nine count bottom. The next thing you need to see is cl price close above Stevie's red line. That's at a buck 80. It's truly trading right now at a buck 73. So it's really close. So you're looking for a bottom. You don't want to see this thing move higher today. You'd like to see it close below that bar number five. I know it sounds kind of awkward so to speak. But that's really what you would like to see. You then want to see price close above to confirm that bottom signal. You'd like to see it get above a buck 75, but preferably tomorrow and then above a buck 82 out there. And that would then be your bottom to then signal that price may only bounce up to about 241. That's at least where the next resistance point is at inside of Carbo Ceramics. It's also at 221, which is the top of its daily profile and 206, the top of its weekly profile. So we know in the twos out there is where we've got some resistance between the low twos, the 241 out there. But you may have a nice bottom signal in Carbo Ceramics uh, today. Great. Great. That's, that's what I'm looking to hear. Okay. So thank you. Thanks again. 
Be back. Watch that price. Watch that price. Closing bar of the uh, bar from, I believe it is October 29th. That's what you're looking at. And that's a buck 78 out there. Great. Thank you very much. You bet. Thanks for calling out there. That was Carbo Ceramics. Ticker symbol, folks, was CRR. So, look, here's what I, I, I'm going to do. I was going to go right, take a look at the ES Mini and so forth, but we do have some folks that have written in. And uh, so I want to get to their questions out here. And basically, Ray was asking the question, not Ray, I'm sorry, Larry was asking the question, is a GDX uh, in an A to B equals CD to the downside? So let's go take a look at the uh, GDX out here and try to answer that question. So if we look Look at the daily time frame chart for the GDX. Here's what Larry is looking at, or what he should be looking at. So we take a look at an A to B equals CD to the downside out here. What we're looking at is the A point is starting right out here in the trading session of September 4th. That's our high. Price moves down and creates a low on September 13th. That's going to be our B point. We'll come back to that. Then the market makes a little bit of a retracement. That retracement takes us up into the high of September 24th. That becomes our C point of this A to B equals CD to the downside. Now, what we like to say around here is when the B point, that swing point, if it is passed with volume, it tells us of an A to B equals CD to the downside. So Larry is looking at the volume on September 13th. That was 80.7 million shares. When price closed below that level, it was on the trading session of October 15th, and it was with 83 million shares. So what the GDX has confirmed, Larry, still is an A to B equals CD down pattern with an initial price projection of 25, 22, and 2403. So that pattern is still out there, even though price is now closing or is trading above the B point out there. So the pattern is still out is still valid. You don't need to get married to it per se. And instead, we've got to take a look and say, okay, what's going on right now? What's going on right now is that price is trading above the top of its profile, Larry. That's 27.50. It's trading at 27.64. As long as price continues to trade above that, this could say at least more of a rally or counter trend rally could take place out there. Where, where could price take us to with price being above the top of the daily profile? Very simple. We go look at the weekly profile. What is that telling us? Well, in the case of the weekly profile, what the GDX looks like is more of a consolidation with price trading between the bottom of its profile, 26.72, and the top at 30 bucks, even Steven. That is your consolidation area out here inside of the GDX. So you've got on the daily time frame, you've got a confirmed A to B equals CD to the downside. But now you've got price trading above resistance, says this could bounce even further. If it could bounce, where could it bounce to? Well, shoot, it could bounce all the way up to 30 bucks. I'm not saying it's going to. But 2880 is not out of the question. Why 2880? Well, you have a brand new monthly profile that is formed in November. The top of that box is 2880. So to answer your question, Larry, yes, there is a confirmed A to B equals CD to the downside in the GDX. That doesn't mean that it won't bounce because price is above support. The top of its daily, it's in between its weekly, and a brand new monthly profile has formed, bullish in nature, to suggest that you can see the GDX trade up to 2880. I hope that helps you out. Thanks for writing in. Look forward to your next write. We'll be right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. What would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. 
If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, Dow is up 103. S&P is 13. Uh, for Peak D in the Den, we're going to go take a look at uh, Green Thumb Industries. Green Thumb Industries right now trade out at 760. Volume behind today's move, Peak D, 341,000 shares so far. A prior swing point that it's uh, taking out had volume. This is, by the way, the trading session of October 2nd, 479,000 shares. So it seems like price is pulling back with some uh, pretty decent volume in it. What we're doing is, I believe, we're uh, searching for a bottom is that correct uh, peak so if we take a look at this just simply from a profile standpoint it's ugly it is really ugly these guys i guess they are growers i would guess of uh, marijuana out here uh, they may have a green thumb for growing but when it comes to growing their stock out here they basically they uh, they suck at it if we take a look at what price is doing today, uh, it's below the bottom of its daily profile, bottom of its weekly profile, bottom of its monthly profile. This suggests that that green thumb is uh, going to plant uh, a little bit deeper uh, in the uh, in its uh, search for a bottom out here. If we go take a look at the daily time frame chart, take a look at signals out here. Well, shoot, price is right now below where this had recently broken out at eight dollars and eight cents. Back on uh, uh, August the 29th out there. Never a good scene. It's okay to pull back to support, which, uh, in fact, Green Thumb did on October 11th, October 2nd, and then just a big rocket ship, uh, rocket ship on October 3rd uh, out there. Uh, but it didn't really last, but just for a few more sessions after that. But that was price coming back to the breakout area. And that is where buyers uh, recognize that, whether they knew that that was a breakout area or not. You know, this is just simply how these chart patterns work on the charts out here. The most fundamental tool is understanding technical analysis. It's a beautiful thing. It's not that complicated to uh, to understand out there if you just simply focus. But, Peak, what you and I know, bad news today, uh, not only trade below the bottom of its daily box, but now trading below a key level of support. This suggests that price wants to move lower. Now, maybe this is going to be an A to B equals CD downside. We'll draw that on the other screen out there. Of course, Peak, I think he likes wave number four. That would be letter D. And maybe Peak is saying, you know, Steve-O, I like you and all, but not so fast. Uh, today is Peak D. Now, Peak, I don't know how you buy those 
peak D, so, but this is a trough D. And, and you've signed in as peak D out here. So not until you, you start trading, uh, signing in as trough D can I actually, I'm just trying to have some fun out here. Maybe not that much fun, but but this is not wave number four to the uh, downside, the old so-called uh, trough out there. But I'm not buying it because of price moving below key level of support out here. If we look at the weekly time frame, this says, well, well, hold on a minute, Steve. Well, maybe, maybe peak has is, is got something there. Maybe price is just simply going to pull back to where this equity had broken out on a weekly time frame, and that price would be $7.37. So it's not there yet. Watch it. That happens to be the low from January 4th out there. But here's the deal, peak. You can see that this is Stevie's red line is red. $8.68 right now, falling price also to below zero. And if price closes below 737 on a weekly basis out there, we could make a lot of 737 jokes, but we won't do that out here. That would really be bad news. And this would say that price would even be headed lower. So that is the, the last breakout area, the last bastion for hope inside of a GTBIF out there um, is that 737 area. I don't really have anything on a monthly time frame, so to speak, because it hasn't been trading enough. But right now, it doesn't look good. The only thing that looks good is it's in wave number four. But I think you already knew that. And that was in honor of you. But I don't see it as a buying opportunity at least as of 146 in the afternoon. I hope that that helps you out. Uh, Tim writes in, and Tim wants to, uh, he's asking about crude oil. So we, I think we probably already took care of this. Um, but, but a specific question is, I'm long crude via USO. Please give me your thoughts on resistance and support levels. Again, if I come back to Lightspeed Crude itself, Resistance is going to be 59.39, assuming that price closes above 56.92 today. So 56.92 is your key level. Now, support out here, Stevie would say support would be 55.21. That's Stevie's green line. Below that would be 53.26. That is on Lightspeed Crude. With regard to trying to give you those same or approximate levels for USO, I'll pull it up here, but it's really you watching the Lightspeed Crude chart more than anything else. I think you want USO, not USOI, which, by the way, there is a symbol. It's USOI. I don't know what it was, but since I did go to the TFNN typing school also out here, I didn't exactly uh, put it in my system the first time, right? But here, resistance inside USO would be 1232. That is because that is where price broke down recently. So that sets up that TD setup resistance level. That's from September 21st out here. Support then would be 1151. That is Stevie's green line out there. And I'll give you the last thing. I'll go ahead and give you those TAS market profiles for you. We'll do that with regard to the three time frames out here, the daily, the weekly, and the monthly. And on the daily basis, what USO is doing, like Lightspeed Crude, trading above the top of its box, that is 1188. So ideally, you'd see it close above that. Uh, the next resistance level would be 1220. That is the top of the weekly time frame. 1237 would be the bottom of the monthly. So those are your resistance levels out there, Tim. I hope that that helps you out and best of luck with that trade. We've got another request that has come in, this one from Jeff L. Jeff says, um, Steve, I think you're asking about platinum. I hope that it is platinum that uh, you are looking at out here. So if we do take a look at platinum, and hopefully I've got that right, Jeff, if I'm wrong about that and I've missed this, um, then my apology, but 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 we're going to get platinum. Uh, we're going to take a look at platinum out here. So what do we know about platinum? Well, platinum may have made a TD set of nine count top on Friday, and Friday's bar was the bar following the TD setup nine count. And that top can come in on bars eight and nine to the bar following. So right now, with regard to platinum, if it is platinum that you're asking about, Jeff, price should pull back to test support. Support's going to be 928.30. If price closes below 928.30, then we're looking at a likely move back to where it broke out. And that was at 887.80. Eighty. We want to pay attention to these TD setup nine counts. Uh, we can see that the last three of four really worked well inside of platinum. Uh, it was a TD setup nine count that identified the high back in September out there. So hopefully that's what you were asking about. But again, if not, uh, write back in and I will be able to uh, help you out. The other thing, well, let me just see here. Was there is there a ticker symbol here? Um, 
Uh, let me just see here. Maybe it was E-L-A-N that you were looking at, um, and which would be Alanco Animal Health. So let me see if that is actually what you were looking for. And if not, well, we're just an educational moment. So this is Alanco Animal Health. And here's what we know right now. Price is trading above the top of its daily profile, 2738. It's a brand new profile that formed today. It's a beautiful thing. So that would be saying price should move to its next level. The next level would be 2972. That would be the top of its bullish structured weekly profile. Now, Stevie is going to say, but be careful. Why be careful? Well, Today's going to be bar number eight of a TD setup nine count. So tomorrow or the next day could actually identify that topping signal. So just be careful with ticker symbol E-L-A-N from its daily perspective. Steve Rhodes with TFNA. We'll be right back. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of DFNN.com. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN. Welcome back, folks. This next segment is brought to you by Mazda. We're going to zoom, zoom, zoom because there's a three request in here. The first one is take a look at natural gas for SM in the uh, Tiger's Den. So, SM, here's what we know. Today, uh, well, you've got natural gas on Friday closed above the top of its weekly profile. That was a 268, so that's a beautiful thing. You gap up today, that's a bullish sign. So that is uh, all points, uh, all things pointing to higher price. But how much higher inside of natural gas? Is there anything to worry about inside of 
natural gas out here. Well, today is going to be day number eight or bar number eight, bait, bar number eight of a TD setup nine count pattern. We do know that these nine count patterns can identify tops and bottoms. It says they be on the lookout for a potential top. You can also see the one to one A to B equals CD to the upside at 286, 11.27, two at 305 out here. So nothing bearish. Nothing bearish at all, but you do need to begin being cautious out there. Just simply adjust your stop uh, out there. You went uh, into you, you went long, you gas. That's fine. Just simply tighten up the stop on that. Uh, uh, because uh, because of this potential for a topping signal or pattern that is in place out there. So I hope that that helps you out. The next request coming in from Hector. Hector wants to take a look at ticker symbol OAS. And the question from Hector is, um, what is it? We'll go much higher from here. So if we take a look at OAS, by the way, is Oasis Petroleum. Uh, right now it's trading right into the top of its daily profile. That's 297. So I don't know if it's going to get above that but above that says that price could move up to 381 if i take a look at my white back well i can't do that if i'm going to get to the other one so watch the 297 level out there and the last question is coming in from alan d which looks like we're going to get close to get him dhi is the ticker symbol i know you want me to do my analysis you've been long since the 30s out here oh boy uh, i've got to put up the other charts here real quickly so give me a second to do that out there price right now trading below the bottom of its daily profile brand new today this would say price could easily pull back to 48.37 49.52 out there um that's what i see at this uh, moment don't let price close below this hammer candle the hammer candle is october 30th you close below the low of a hammer candle it says if you're long you're wrong hey folks stay tuned david white's up next we'll see you on terrific tuesday thanks for being here